Let's look at the blessed sacrament and worship and sing together. Holy, Holy Spirit. Abba Father, every inner wound be healed right now. Holy, Holy Spirit. As we are attending these three days of inner healing retreat, Holy, Holy Spirit. let your healing touch come to every child of God who is attending. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. Heal all the wounds and rejection. Will everything be healed right now? There are so many families who are affected, infected with many kinds of inflections. We pray for those healings. Let there be peace and joy and happy and harmony in the families. Let's all sing together. Father, wash away my peace. We feel your presence here now. We thank you for the anointing that we feel right now in our body. You are the healer. There is nothing impossible for you, Lord. We pray for everyone who is going through different types of inner wounds. Heal everyone. Heal every rejection. Heal every spirit of anger, irritation, disturbance. Feel every child of God loud. We pray for the whole world. We pray for everyone right now. Bring your healing to my heart. Help me now once again. Let's all sing together. Thank you, Lord. Wash away my pain. Bring your healing to my heart. Help me love once again. Thank you, Father. Wash away my sin. Bring your healing to my heart. Help me love once again. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there is healing. In the name of Jesus, there is deliverance. In the name of Jesus, there is anointing. In the name of Jesus, there is power. In the name of Jesus, that is power. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's sing together. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 
Mighty healings are taking place right now. Holy, Holy Spirit. Sylvia, the Lord is blessing you. Holy, Holy Gilda, the Lord is blessing you. Holy, Holy Miguel, the Lord is blessing you. Lissy, the Lord is blessing you. Someone who has got pain in your lower abdomen pain, the Lord is healing you. Somebody who has got weakness in your legs, the Lord is healing you. Someone who is listening voices in your ears, the Lord is delivering you. The whole heaven is open now. Holy, Holy Spirit. Holy, Holy Everybody, Abba, Abba, Father. Abba, Abba, Father. Thank you, Lord. Abba, Abba, Father. Let's look at the blessed sacrament and sing together. Abba, Abba, Father. Abba, Abba, Father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's close our eyes and feel the presence of God. My dear brothers and sisters, we are starting these three days of inner healing retreat. Inform all your friends and family members and share with them the link for this retreat so that they should never miss even a single aspect of this retreat. Let them be able to attend the retreat from the beginning. Therefore, all those who are already present for this inner healing retreat, Please do a, do a uh, charity by sharing this link to all your friends and family members. Somebody will open and listen, watch and they will be blessed. Therefore, let us share with everyone and close their eyes in the presence of God as we are starting this inner healing retreat for these coming three days. Let everyone who is going through some kind of inner wound be healed right now in Jesus name. Let there be deliverance and healings and miracles in Jesus' name. Every rejection, loneliness be healed right now in Jesus' name. There are so many families affected, infected by these inner wounds and because of which there is no peace, joy, happiness in the families. Let us pray in a special way for these so that they may all be healed from all the inner wounds that they are going through. Let us pray very seriously about this. The Lord is blessing everyone. He is already healing many people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Right now, let's close our eyes and keep your hands on your heart. And pray for all those who are in your family members, all those who are attending this live streaming. Especially if anyone who is really in need of some healing touch, pray for them in a special way. Anyone who is going through terrible unforgiveness, hatred, anger, revenge, anyone who is in seriously affect, affected by inner wounds and the reactions of inner wounds, pray for them. As we are going to sing together, calling the name of Jesus, the Lord is healing every one of them. 
the lord is going to start healing from uh, feeling you from right now onwards you are going to experience the healing touch let's sing together jesus 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 thank you lord thank you for healing everybody jesus, right now jesus thank you for healing these children now thank you for healing all those who are attending this live streaming jesus, right now jesus jesus thank you jesus thank you for all the deliverance healing miracles in jesus name jesus 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 abba father we thank you jesus 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 Let's all stretch out your hand toward Jesus and sing together. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus we thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, pray Jesus, for healing. Jesus, we pray for the healing of everybody right now. Jesus, Let everyone Jesus, be healed and blessed now in Jesus name. Love you Jesus for all. Wash away my sins. Bring your healing to my heart. Thank you Lord Jesus 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 Thank you Lord Thank you Jesus Let's all repeat the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus. Use the gift of tongue and worship God freely. These are the moments of anointing. These are the moments of deliverance right now. Let every child of God open your mouth and worship God with your all your might and strength. The Lord is anointing every child of God now. The Lord is healing and delivering everybody right now. Subhi ara dri 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 dri
Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is strengthening the weak hands, a shoulder pain. The Lord is healing you right now. Somebody in the in your body, there is a lump in the body. The Lord is healing you right now. The lump has disappeared right now in Jesus' name. Oh Jesus Glory 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 Ashbul ala ala bahuri ardri rudri 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 Ashbul ala bahura band hora bashbura bahari ardri Thank you Jesus thank you Father thank you Jesus Glory 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 Shaballa bahura band hora bashbura bahari ardri there is power in the name of Jesus. There is anointing in the name of Jesus. When you repeat the name of Jesus, mighty healings are taking place now. Consolation, strengthening. The Lord is healing and strengthening your body right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, please be seated comfortably and you are most welcome to these three days of inner healing retreat. And I'm sure you have kept aside all your distractions, all your worries, tension, everything. Be at ease and be comfortable in your home, wherever you are, and take pen and paper and Bible in front of you because every word that touches you, every point that helps you, please write it down somewhere because it will be useful for you for the future. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. So as we start this inner healing retreat today, as you all know, the inner wounds and inner healing is not a small topic to be covered in three hours you know, though we have three days of retreat, it is not three days as such. Three hours today, three hours tomorrow, three hours day after tomorrow. Out of these three hours, we will be able to talk to you. The talk on inner healing is only one hour, one and a half hours or maximum. So, therefore, this one and a half hour for this one day, another one and a half hour tomorrow and day after tomorrow, it won't be sufficient to deal with all the inner wounds and all the other areas of our inner healing and inner wounds. But this will be a series of inner healing. So in every retreat, one way or the other, you are getting healed from different wounds, different kind of inner healing. So this retreat, we will focus on certain aspects which God wants us to speak. And in the next in a healing retreat, we will be speaking about different aspect. So likewise, one by one, we can attack the evil one, the small, small wounds and get rid of it. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. So inner wounds are part of every human being. Everyone who commits sin has got inner wound. We commit sin because of the inner wound. Because of the inner wound, we commit sin. So, everyone who commits sin has, has got some kind of inner wound. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. 
so we are going to deal with one one by one the problems that we face in our daily life so today i would like to speak to you about anger the spirit of anger how to overcome anger anger is something which many people struggle with and there are so many people who used to say father i have un out uncontrollable anger how to come out of it so this is one area which i also struggled with in my life and also i have seen many people struggling in this area and um, i have seen many people coming out of it too praise the lord so today we are going to deal with how to overcome anger how to deal with our anger if you have anyone who has got this problem of anger remember the lord is going to heal you and help you right now as you are listening to the word of god listening to this preaching the lord is healing somebody who has got pain on your finger especially your left hand fingers uh, especially the uh, pointing finger the lord is healing you right now you are having a problem but now you are healed praise the lord as you go on listening to the word of god the lord is going to heal you console you strengthen you and deliver you and give you healing in a healing praise the lord ah, hallelujah so today we are going to speak about anger many people the moment we say about anger they look at anger the emotion anger is an emotion anger in a different way in a negative way but anger is an emotion all the emotions are gift of god therefore anger is also a gift of god anger in itself is not a sin anger in itself is not a sin but it's an emotion it's an emotion which is which is a gift of god every emotion the love compassion mercy and also the emotion of romance emotion of uh, uh, fraternal love affection emotion of sexuality emotion of all these emotions these are all gift of god so we need to understand there are so many misunderstanding about anger and also sexuality sexuality is considered as something evil for many people sexuality is one of the the greatest gift god has given to the human being so sexuality is not something bad it's a gift how do you use it that's what is making is whether good or bad but in itself in itself it is good anger the same way anger in itself is good and it's emotion it's a gift of god praise the lord uh, hallelujah again the lord is healing someone who has got problem with the left here your pain or some kind of uh, you know some kind of irritation disturbance heaviness in your ears the lord is healing you right now praise the lord so when we speak about anger i said anger is an emotion it is it's something good sometimes every anger when you have for example when you see something suddenly anger raise up inside so it is not under your control it just comes so since it just comes it is not under your control you are not responsible for that because it just comes and therefore if you are not responsible for that then it's not a sin but after the anger came inside once it's raised inside how are you dealing with this anger that makes it sinful or virtuous if you do deal with this anger in a proper way then it will become virtuous if you don't deal with this but if you deal with this anger which is raising inside if you deal with it in a negative way it becomes sinful praise the lord anger is always good anger is a gift of god if there is no anger there is no development for example mother teresa she was in a convent loreto convent in calcutta and she was teaching children and she was a very good teacher but one day 
when she was having a train journey she had a god experience and meanwhile she also had seen poor people on the roadside out uh, downtrodden wounded rejected lonely and lepers dying people nobody attends them no one cares for them no one heals their wound no one nurses them she has seen so many people dying on the roadside then suddenly there was a moral anger inside she was angry at the society she was angry at the system and she wanted someone to take care of them but nobody was there to take care of them and, and support them therefore she was so frustrated she wanted to do something but she was unable to do she went and told her superior mother and said mother we need to do something there are so many people who are dying on the roadside then mother said that is not our charism the charism of our congregation is teaching let us focus on our charism someone else will do that duty then she could not accept it she knew she has to do it and out of this anger against all these things that is happening around she wanted to do it something she was so frustrated to see all these evil things taking place around therefore she left the convent and she came out to the streets and she started saving them helping the nursing them and took taking care of them and that's how the missionaries of charity sisters the congregation started in the whole world and one of the biggest congregation in the world and which has got presence in almost lots of countries around the world and this all started because of this anger against what was happening around she reacted positively her anger emotion she diverted in a positive way and therefore it had a tremendous impact on this whole world my dear brothers and sisters we should never suppress our anger we should express it suppressed anger will produce some kind of evil later either it will create a kind of deformity in your character or it will create sicknesses in you therefore every suppressed anger should be expressed but when you express the anger express it in the constructive positive way therefore it will be fruitful like what mother teresa did praise the lord in order to make you understand about the effect of a positive anger i will give you one more example so when we were small we used to go to we didn't have any tv in our home but our neighbor is has a good tv uh what we the children from the neighborhood we used to go every sunday we used to go to the neighbor to watch movie because sunday there is a special movie that comes in the tv so we all used to go to the neighbor because they only they had the tv none of us had the tv so we is we sat there and then used to watch movie and lots of children inside outside everywhere so we used to get little space in here and there and will be able to watch the tv but one day when we went they had some guest and they said today no movie they closed the door so we were disappointed everyone went back to their home and we also came back me and my brother we came back home very disappointed almost about to cry and then we were very small and then when we came back my father asked what happened then we said they closed the door we, they chased us out there is no tv there is no movie today and then my father was very angry and he was so angry since he, we were chased out he felt as if he is chased out and he was so angry as a result somehow he managed to gather some money and the next day he bought a tv for us so the result is this anger and new tv so if there is no anger no development and so moral anger that comes inside we can be turned into good so you can turn the anger into negatively or ang turn anger into positively it depends on you praise the lord uh, hallelujah our will our will can command command any emotion our will has got control on our emotion will commands and then accordingly the emotion behaves 
For example, so uh, one day I kept something very important on my table, and then after some time it's mi found missing. I was very angry. I was very angry at all the volunteers, and then I was I wanted to find out who took it, and then I asked everyone, and nobody knows. And then suddenly, I heard somebody say, "It is Father Anthony took it." When I came to know Father Anthony took it, my anger subsided, controlled. If it was someone else, I would have shouted at them, "Praise the Lord!" What does it mean? My will has got a command on my emotion. Sometimes anger comes uncontrollably, but it is not uncontrollable. There is a command that our will is giving. Suppose some certain actions which somebody does you against you, it may hurt you. But if it is done by your best friend, it doesn't hurt you. Why? Because your will commands in different occasions and differently. Therefore, no one can say, "I have uncontrollable anger." The problem is certain anger your will doesn't command. Your will has taken a decision. I am not going to control my emotion because this person is not good. But when it comes to another person, my will say, "Okay, I am going to control my emotion because this person is a very important person." What does it mean? There is no uncontrollable anger. Everything is controlled by our will. Therefore. the proper instruction should be given to the will not to the emotion will has to control emotion so how do you how do you manage this this is what we are going to reflect in today's class praise the lord a uh, hallelujah thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit so my desire my reaction is also coming from my desire praise the lord so we are going to reflect the different aspect of in the wounds especially these anger anger now how do we handle your anger that makes you sinful for example one day I remember i was preaching gospel and i was preaching in front of the people and there was tape altar here and there was candles lighted on the uh, on the both sides then i saw the one candle on the top of it the whole wax was melted and collected and one person and is coming and taking this hand candle when he was taking the candle i was preaching like this standing in front of the people and i saw that man was handling the candle carelessly and i knew this wax is going to fall down on the altar the altar altar cloth the white cloth will be uh, for, you know uh, Uh, de uh, defiled so i was so angry my anger raised inside because i saw him care uh, handling the candle carelessly i wanted to tell him be careful but before i open my mouth suddenly he dropped all the wax on the altar and all the cloth was spo spoiled and then suddenly i was really angry because he didn't take it carefully and then he also felt so bad because the wax fell on the altar and he knew i'm going to shout at him and the people are all there watching so he was so ang he was so hurt and i mean he was so afraid he looked at the candle and then he looked at me like this then i looked at him and the anger was racing inside then since there are people watching me suddenly my will commanded to my emotion what did the will command now if you the will told me my will told me father joseph if you shout at him now everybody will watch everyone will come to know and then they will come to know that you are an angry person you have no control on your emotion but and you just finished to talk on forgiveness and now how can you get angry but instead 
calm yourself down there is no meaning in getting angry because the altar cloth is already spoiled therefore calm down and be a good role model in front of these people then i looked at him and he was looking at me so scared then i looked at him and smiled when i smiled he was so comfortable he was so comforted he was so happy and somehow he took the candle and put the another one and then people were also happy the, nobody was hurt he was not hurt people were not hurt i was also not hurt and after the session this man came running to me and said father i'm so sorry i was so careless and i dropped and i spoiled the cloth i will buy a new cloth and keep it there i'm sorry father the problem solved we got a new altar cloth my dear brothers and sisters if i shouted at him just because he dropped the wax on the altar suppose if i got angry with him and shouted at him you know what happens he will be hurt publicly and humiliated he never come back again he will stop helping in this ministry he will move second all the people who are watching they heard the talk on forgiveness and they came to know this priest is not able to practice it and they will be scandalized and third i will regret all throughout my life about my action if a small mistake happens if my will is not ready to command the right command to my emotion remember it is going to be terrible the impact will be terrible therefore be very careful don't ever say i have uncontrollable anger every anger can be controlled provided your will is ready to control your will is ready to command praise the lord sometimes our will doesn't command suppose i don't like a person if that person does something my will will not command and say okay let the emotion go as is as it wants suppose if i like somebody very much my best friend does something then suddenly my will say don't no don't don't hurt him don't break this relationship he is your best friend therefore even if that person does something very bad i will not get angry because my will is controlling my emotion praise the lord therefore there is anger sometimes we are we are choice we choose we choose some certain people and therefore every anger which we express there is a sin aspect every anger which we express negatively has got a terrible sin it is a sin we have to confess it even if you say it uncontrollable is a sin because no uncontrollable sin no uncontrollable anger praise the lord a uh, hallelujah now another point that we need to remember anger if i ask how many of you have got uncontrollable anger i'm sure majority of you will lift your hands up and say father i have control uncontrollable anger i have severe anger sometimes i can't control my anger but let me tell you one thing most of these anger those who do have this anger uncontrollable anger or serious ang serious anger remember somebody in your family also has got this anger either father or mother your eldest brother or sister or somebody in your family has got this anger because anger is also hereditary and contagious anger is contagious for example if i see somebody shouting and getting angry slowly my anger i also will start getting angry if you are watching a movie or video where people are shouting at each other angry at each other suddenly your face also will change you will also get angry because anger is contagious the moment you show anger you are instilling anger in everyone you are sharing a small share of your sin to everybody therefore even if you get angry personally is a social sin even if you get angry so uh, personally individually for your personal problem it is a social sin it affects the whole community 
especially if you are in a family or a community it will affect your husband your wife your children everyone close to you because there is a vibration that you give it out therefore we have to be very careful praise the lord if somebody in your family has uncontrollable anger remember how how much you suffered from that anger therefore the same suffering you are giving to someone else praise the lord a hallelujah thank you jesus therefore we have to be very careful in connect controlling our anger let's read gospel of matthew chapter 5 verse 22 gospel of matthew chapter 5 verse 22 matthew 5 22 let's read we read like this but i say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister you will be liable to judgment if you insult a brother or sister you will be liable to the council and if you say you fool you will be liable to the hell of fire praise the lord let's read once again if i say to you if you are angry with a brother suppose you are keeping anger inside against your brother you are not at spoken you have not at reacted but you are keeping anger inside you know therefore one thing you have to remember the anger may raise inside the moment it raises inside you have to control it divert it express it con you know constructively don't allow the anger to reside in you praise the lord more than even a second don't allow to allow the anger to control you or remi remain with you more than one or two seconds you know why the more it is remaining in you you are accountable in front of god the more it remains in you you are liable to judgment you know the more you allow the anger to remain in you it will produce evil praise the lord one example here the it is mentioned i said to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister you will be liable to judgment if you have anger remaining in you you are liable to judgment if you insult a brother knowingly or unknowingly you may insult if there is an anger remaining in your heart the second reaction is insult avoiding showing off speaking against or making fun of you know many ways we will react may not be directly but indirectly making insulting so if you then that is the second effect if you if the anger remains in you you will show it in a different way may not be directly because you are a christian you are supposed to forgive therefore you may not directly attack indirectly you will show it then the lord says if you insult a brother or sister you will be liable to counsel praise the lord and the third one direct attack the third one first one keeping inside second one showing indirectly third one directly you fool calling person nickname and you know and also insulting abusing speaking bad words swearing words by doing so the lord says you will be liable to the hell of fire in this third reaction it is for sure you will go to hell this is the development anger remains showing it indirectly and showing it directly once the third step you reach the third step you are eligible or liable to the hell of fire this is what jesus says very clearly therefore please be very careful if anybody is harboring anger against your brother or sister be very careful because you are in the first stage therefore the second stage and third stage will happen anytime if the second stage and third stage doesn't happen then there will be another problem if you are harboring, harboring anger against any, anybody your sickness will never be healed praise the lord your sickness will never be healed we read like this in the word of god 
Sirach 28 verse 2 Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done then your, then your sins will be pardoned when you pray Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray Verse 3 Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Sirach 28 verse 3 Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Therefore if there is any anger inside you cannot expect healing from the Lord. I know one person who had come to our retreat center some years ago. He had a wound on his leg. It was not getting healed. It was a small, you know, some thorn went inside and a small wound and slowly, slowly pus formation, infection, infection and it became big wound and there is pus coming out every day and they applied medicines, they checked their sugar level, everything is normal but the wound is not getting healed. And then they tried medicines after medicines and then at the end the doctors could not do anything. They came for retreat. During the retreat he attended the retreat and during the retreat, during the inner healing retreat he came to know that he has got uncontrollable anger against his father. He hated his father. He never used to speak to his father. The moment he sees his father he gets inside his room and never comes in front of his father. If father wants to speak to him he will shout at him it's terrible unforgiveness and he, during the retreat he came to know this is the reason why he is not getting healed he had this un un unforgiveness but he never knew that was the reason for his unhealed wound but during the retreat he came to know then he during the inner healing adoration he repented he cried he asked forgiveness from his father touching his feet imagining that his father is there and instead of father there was another person standing he touched the feet of his father and asked forgiveness and then the next day at that day he cleaned the wound applied some medicine which he used to do every day for, for the, so many months he was applying medicine and cleaning the wound every day morning and after evening. So that day after the inner healing adoration he applied the medicine as usual and, and kept the uh, bandage and went to sleep. Normally he never used to sleep because of the pain. Because the moment he turns this side or that side the wound get affected and he was not able to sleep. He used to get up at midnight many times. But that day he had a peaceful sleep and early morning when he removed the bandage to heal the, uh, clean the wound, he noticed the wound is already healed. My dear brothers and sisters, if you, have, if you harbor anger against your brother, you cannot expect any healing because medicines will not be effective in your body. Even medicines will not work. Because your body is rejecting even medicine. Because your body is producing some kind of hormone which is not supportive to the medicine because of this unforgiveness inside of you. Therefore, anyone who has got unforgiveness, it will create problem for themselves. Praise the Lord. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be very careful how to uh, overcome anger so this first point then remember don't ever harbor anger against anybody it will block your healing any kind of healing and especially cancer and all the other other serious sicknesses which can affect you if you harbor anger against somebody in your family or someone against against someone in your life if you keep anger it will create kind of med uh, hormones and reactions in your body it will reduce the impact of the medicines medicines will be ineffective ineffective in your body praise the lord a hallelujah a hallelujah thank you jesus another root of fear sorry root of anger is because of fear many people are having anger because of fear many people think if we stay angry we are safe stay 
stay angry if we stay angry we are stay safe many people think so for example for example even even among the animals where big dog and a small dog come face to face which dog will bark first the small dog will go on barking the big dog will try to avoid the small one but the small one will go on barking moving around the big dog and going on barking why because the small dog is frightened the big dog is not frightened therefore he is not bothered about the small one but the small one is bothered about the big one because he is frightened suppose if the big dog make a big barking the small dog will run for life then why was he barking so far because he is frightened so many people are like these they are getting angry because they want to stay safe they think by getting angry we are safe praise the lord that is why somebody said barking dogs seldom bite they will just bark because they are really afraid so that is why some people at home have you seen some wives barking some husbands barking because if a wife is barking we can understand because they are frightened but if a husband is also barking that means he is more frightened so anger many people are hiding behind anger they show as if they are very powerful and strong by getting angry but it is an escapism they are trying to hide behind anger by getting angry they feel they stay, stay safe they are safe praise the lord a uh, hallelujah so therefore my dear brothers and sisters be very careful about this that is why we read first to john chapter 4 verse 18 first to john chapter 4 verse 18 first to john chapter 4 verse 18 there is no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love there is no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear in god there is no fear that is why god doesn't destroy evil god doesn't destroy devil god doesn't des destroy lucifer because in god there is no fear if there is no fear you will never attack but you will only love praise the lord a uh, hallelujah so god doesn't destroy lucifer because even lucifer is a fallen angel of god's creation and he will never destroy him praise the lord he may destroy at the end to you know cast him out but never destroy cast him out to the hell of fire once and for all completely and bind him but will never destroy anyone praise the lord a uh, hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters this is because god is not afraid of anyone god has no enemy god doesn't consider any anybody as an enemy if you consider any anybody as your enemy you will try to eliminate them you want to get rid of them because you think they are your enemy that is why it's a small gesture we avoid we avoid them we avoid talking to them we avoid meeting them if possible we would have eliminated them but we are afraid of the consequences therefore we are taking the safest position avoid them praise the lord therefore my dear brothers and sisters in love in the perfect love cast out fear therefore if you if you want to overcome anger unforgiveness the best way is don't go on waste your energy in dealing with your anger but start enjoying the presence of god and fill your heart with love if the love of god is in you you will get rid of anger if the love of god is there in you if you start reading the bible listening to the preaching worshiping god then you will be able to forgive your enemies and overcome anger the more you the more you go away from the presence of god the more you get angry praise the lord praise the lord a uh, hallelujah thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit abba father we praise you we worship you 
we give you glory all glory to you father thank you father praise you father i remember some one day one person came and said father i want to forgive my wife she used to get angry with me very many times she always make fun of me insult me in front of the children in front of everyone and abuse me and i have decided to separate myself and i said you should not do that you should go back to your wife then he said father i'm waiting for my wife to come back to me and say i'm sorry she should know what she was doing is wrong she should be aware of her mistake she should correct herself then i said maybe she is also thinking the same way she must be thinking that you should come back you should ask for forgiveness because you reacted you also reacted so somebody has to take initiative then he said father let her come and ask for forgiveness first then i will ask for forgiveness she did mistake first therefore let her ask for forgiveness first then suddenly i remember jesus talking like this jesus said my enemies who hurt me abused me wounded me crucified me none of them came and asked forgiveness from me but i forgave them father forgive them they do not know what they are doing so i told this man if you are a christian if you are following jesus christ jesus is telling you this when i was on the calvary on mount calvary nobody came to me ask forgiveness but i forgive them therefore don't wait for your wife to come and ask forgiveness you go and ask forgiveness and forgive them praise the lord a hallelujah so my dear brothers and sisters these are the most important points that we need to remember about forgiveness sorry about anger when you get angry so i'm going to give you some points how to overcome anger now you already heard the introduction to the anger the different aspect of the anger but now i'm going to speak to you how to overcome anger praise the lord and i told you already i about one example one one of our volunteers was dropping the wax on the altar so when i suppose if i had shouted at him it would have become a sinful act and a scandal in front of so many people and that person must be hurt for once and for all he may stop coming to the retreat center maybe he may stop going to the church because of this action it would have become a very big sinful act but since i controlled myself and behaved in a constructive way and i tried to smile in front of him and then the impact was very important because all the people were so happy this man was so happy and i was also happy my reaction became virtuous a virtue my every anger is an occasion for an occasion for a sin or an occasion for a virtue every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue my dear brothers and sisters in our busy schedule in our daily life we may not be gathering collecting so many virtues in heaven god wants you to collect maximum virtues in heaven as a priest when i remember when i think about myself i'm busy preaching every day running retreats online and everything just because i'm doing my duty as a priest it doesn't mean i will go to heaven this is my duty as a priest this is what i'm supposed to do this is my work which is entrusted to me if i'm faithful in this god will be happy but that that, that alone will never be sufficient to take me to heaven but instead i have to collect lot of virtues in heaven the less the less are the virtue in heaven i will be in trouble the more the virtues in heaven i will be i will be safe but i don't get time to collect virtues because i'm so busy preparing the talk every day and delivering it and then uh, busy getting connected through social media so that we can 
and share all the links and everything to the people so busy in this busy process when am i going to get a time to collect virtues in heaven therefore god gives me lots of opportunities to collect virtues and anger is an one of those occasions where i am getting an opportunity to collect virtue in heaven therefore write down one point every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue if you deal with it positively constructively you are collecting a virtue in heaven if you deal with it negatively you are a, you are collecting a sin in the hell praise the lord this point please be be remember romans chapter 12 verse 19 onwards romans chapter 12 verse 19 beloved never avenge yourselves but leave room for the wrath of god for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord god says vengeance is mine i will repay you don't take revenge you don't show revenge god will do it it's up to him he will do it in a positive way constructive way if you do it you will do it negatively so hand it over to god god knows how to deal with it god knows how to express his anger and revenge and change the person god's revenge will never destroy a person but god's revenge will convert a person praise the lord a hallelujah the best way to destroy your enemy is making your best friend by making your enemy as the best friend you are destroying your enemy once and for all i remember in one one religious house two priests were fighting with each other they were not able to forgive each other and then one of them one of them uh, told the uh, their provincial superior and said father i cannot live with this man it is horrible to live this priest live with this priest then the provincial said so what shall i do please either transfer him or transfer me he said then provincial said if i transfer you or transfer him now your anger will remain forever your unforgiveness will remain forever i am removing every opportunity for you to reconcile because you don't meet each other you will never speak with each other you will never contact each other therefore i am taking away the possibility of reconciliation therefore the provincial looked at him and said if you want a pro transfer first both of you should reconcile with each other forgive each other and be happy then i will transfer one of you then if you don't get this reconciled i am going to keep you here forever and ever then both of them got disappointed and from that day they started working on how to get reconciled and within one or two months they got reconciled and forgave each other then the provincial called them and said shall i transfer one of you then they said no need we are happy we are best friends now and now they eliminated the enemy once and for all therefore the best way to take revenge on your enemy is eliminate him once and for all how make him or make her your best friend so that's how we should work otherwise if you are trying to avoid that person or get or keep a distance from that person you are you are entering into an eternal unforgiveness even if you escape from that person keeping that person in america you are going to australia you cannot escape you are still having an enemy somewhere in the world praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus some may say father what about an abusive person if i going to make friendship with that person he is going to abuse me he is going to abuse me abuse me hurt me destroy me how to overcome that so there are many 
many people in this world they want to forgive their husband they want to forgive their wife they want to forgive their enemies but if they go to talk to them they will hurt them so in order to escape from being further hurt they keep a distance not because they keep they have unforgiveness against them but they want to escape from hurting them that means so here there is no aspect of forgiveness because you have already forgiven but you don't want to relate to that person because if you relate to that person that person is going to hurt you that's all you are frightened of being hurt you're not angry with the other person therefore there is no aspect of unforgiveness but there is an aspect of inner healing inner wound because you are you are getting hurt when somebody speaks you are hurt that means you already have a hurt inside for example if i have a small thorn in my hand if somebody comes and press my right hand i will not be happy. i I will, i will not be hurt i will not react but if somebody press my left hand i will react i will say move don't touch why i have already having a wound and when that person touches i'm hurt what does it mean if i am hurt because of the reaction of somebody that means i have already a, already there is a wound in me therefore i need inner healing such people they need to pray and try for inner healing inner healing there is some wound already you are carrying you need to get healed of this wound praise the lord a hallelujah thank you jesus lift up your right hand and say a hallelujah jesus master have mercy on me jesus master have mercy on me jesus master have mercy on me somebody who is having running nose for long time you are always having some allergy and the lord says it's also connected to inner wound and about lack of acceptance accepting certain situation or the place where you are or the situation where you are in you have to accept it as if it's a gift of god don't live there as if you don't like you want to escape so it can create a kind of allergy so the lord wants you to accept it as you are especially the situation where you are in so thank the lord and say thank you lord for giving me this opportunity giving me this house give me this family giving me this atmosphere giving me this country so thank the lord you will receive the healing praise the lord hallelujah so let me the first point that you have to remember in, in order to overcome your anger is every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue please remember that first first point second the anger should be expressed constructively no anger should be suppressed your anger should be expressed constructively what does it mean constructively i remember some time back when in syria and iraq and other places when so many christians were persecuted isis terrorists were killing so many christians so many christians and i was so angry i was so angry at these isis people i was really angry and then i was wondering how could they do this so many innocent people not only in syria and other places but also in nigeria and uh, many other places where the christians are taken away forceful conversion men are killed women are raped and so many things are happening children are made slaves i was so angry so i didn't know how to express my anger so i was so angry in my heart every opportunity where i got to speak against all these people i always spoke against them but that was not the way the constructive expression of my anger so this anger was suppressed inside then one day i heard one of a one of our priest a charismatic priest he was also angry at these terrorist because of all what they have done then i watched one of his sessions and i saw him announcing he is expressing his anger you know how he expressed he announced 
40 days of fasting for the conversion of ISIS terrorists. He expressed his anger by 40 days, declaring 40 days of fasting for the conversion of ISIS terrorists. You know, when you have an anger raised inside, a tremendous power of energy is created in your body. You have to divert it constructively, otherwise this energy may explode one day. The suppressed energy which is inside of you may explode. It should be diverted constructively and collect maximum virtues and grace upon it. This priest, he expressed his anger. All the energy which he collected out of anger, he expressed it by releasing 40 days of fasting. It was so powerful. Then I also joined with him in whatever I could do. My dear brothers and sisters, listen very carefully. If you have anger, you should express it, but constructively. It should be, the expression of anger should be fruitful. You should express. One day when I was speaking about this expression of anger, one husband said, Father, what you said is exactly, it is very correct. And he said, Father, this is exactly what I did too. I said, what did you do? I got angry with my wife. I expressed my anger because she was doing mischievous things for many years. I always suppressed, but after listening to your preaching, I expressed it. Then I said, then what is the, so what is the consequence now? She divorced me. Then I said, my dear friend, this is not what I said. You express your anger constructively. Your anger was destructive. That is why that separation. That is not what I am talking about. You should be able to express your anger only if you are 100% sure it is going to produce some fruits. Jesus got angry in Jerusalem temple. And he knew it is going to produce fruits. It is going to help thousands of generations. It is going to help all the Christians for hereafter. He cleansed the temple. Another occasion, he expressed his anger. Let us read Mark chapter 3 verse 5. 3, 4. Mark 3, 4. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? Because there was a man with their hand. Then Jesus said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? To save life or to kill? But they were silent. They were silent. They kept silent. Then verse 5. He looked around at them with anger. Jesus was so angry because they are keeping silence. It was a simple question Jesus asked that they are keeping silence purposely. Then Jesus was so angry and he expressed his anger. How? He was grieved at their hardness of heart and he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and he was healed, restored. The anger which Jesus had, he expressed it in a form of healing. It's a constructive expression of anger. When Jesus was angry with this man, those people, Jesus did not get up and give a hit on his nose. No. Jesus could have done that. Or Jesus could have just commanded everyone, let everybody become blind. Or Jesus would have said, okay, everyone, let them be dead. They would have died instantly. That is not an expression of anger. Jesus expressed anger by healing that person. Even on the Sabbath day. Stretch out, be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, if you are sure your anger is expressed constructively, you are allowed to express it. If, if you are 100% sure that it is going to produce something good, only then it should be expressed. Or express, in a con express it in a constructive way. For example, just because ISIS terrorists were attacking Christians doesn't mean you get somehow managed to hire a gun and go to, uh, go to Syria and then start shooting at all those people. That is not a proper expression of anger. It is imprudent. You won't even reach there. So my dear brothers and sisters, the best expression of anger, which is that, that is what the priest did. 
40 days of fasting all the energy collected he diverted in a constructive way it produced lots of grace upon him and he became powerful and the result is isis terrorist their strength was weakened what you cannot do with them mighty machine guns and ak-47 your fasting can do my dear brothers and sisters you have got a tremendous energy the moment there is an anger raised inside of you use it constructively it is more powerful than the machine guns praise the lord a hallelujah okay therefore the first point every occasion for an anger is an occasion for a virtue the second point anger should be expressed constructively only if you are sure that it is going to be fruitful you should express it praise the lord the third one this is one po point that you need to remember in order to overcome anger this is one point that you have to remember i remember when i was in the seminary we were 30 people in my batch including me 30 people but out of these 30 28 of them were very good to me but one person he used to irritate me every day he was a big headache for me and he used to shout at me insult me call me nicknames and publicly insult me hurt me i was struggling to forgive him just because I want to become a good priest, so I used to forgive him. But how long? Because he is hurting me every day. One day I got lost my control. I went to my spiritual father and complained against him and said, Please do something for this man. He is abusing me, hurting me publicly, insulting me. I am tired of him. Please do. Advise him. Then my spiritual father looked at me and said, My dear son, you should forgive him. Never keep anger against him. Go and say, I'm sorry. Then I said, why should I say? He should tell me. Because he did mistake. I didn't do anything against him. Then he said, no, you have to tell him. Because you kept anger against him. You kept a distance from him. Therefore, you should go and ask forgiveness from him. Then... I was really angry but still since I wanted to become a good priest I decided to go and ask forgiveness from him and I went to him and said my dear friend I'm sorry forgive me then he looked at me and said okay I forgive you now but don't repeat it I was really irritated but still I kept quiet and then after some time after some days, again he did the same mistake. He started uh, abusing me, hurting me, insulting me. I was really angry. I went, ran to the priest and said, Father, please do something. He's again irritating me. And I'm not talking to him. Then my spiritual father said, No, no, you should never do that. Do you want to become a good priest? I said, Yes. Then go and ask forgiveness. I said, Should I ask again? Yes, you should ask again. Then I went to him and said, my dear friend, I'm really sorry. I kept anger and I kept a distance from you. Please forgive me. Then he looked at me and said, you are coming and asking forgiveness every time. When are you going to change? Please don't repeat it again. He took me for granted. He, he didn't know that he's wrong. He thinks I'm wrong because I'm coming and asking for forgiveness every time. And therefore, he's not bothered about himself and his mistake, but he's looking at my mistake. But still, I forgave him and I reconciled with him. But after two days, again he did the same. He hurt me. This time I lost my full control. I came running to the priest and said, Father, do something. Then the spiritual father said, what did Jesus say? I said, what did he say? Then the priest, priest said, you should forgive 770 times. Then I was really angry with Jesus because Jesus can say many things and we are struggling to practice it. And then I said, no way. I'm not going to listen to this. Either he or me should be out of this seminary. I cannot go on like this. Because I was 100% sure the priest will not send me out. But he, they will send him out because he was a headache for everybody. So I knew something will happen to him. The priest will send him out. But I was shocked when my spiritual father told me something. He said, my dear son, he is, he is not tired of doing 
evil to you why are you getting tired of doing good to him he is not tired of doing evil he is so faithful and committed in doing evil you are not faithful and committed in doing good if you consider the faithful in act, faithfulness in action he is more faithful than you he is faithful in what he is doing but you are not faithful in what you are do, supposed to do then he said one sentence galatians chapter 6 verse 9 galatians chapter 6 verse 9 Galatians 6:9 So let us not grow weary in doing what is right for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up So let us not grow weary in doing what is right do not be tired of doing evil sorry do not be tired of doing good do not be tired of doing good So this boy this boy he was not tired of doing evil to me therefore I should not be tired of doing good to him This is a problem my dear brothers and sisters many people they are ready to do good for one or two, two times or three times or seven times after that their real color will come out because they think by doing good you cannot be successful but be, by doing evil you will be successful that is the work of the devil one day one person said father my enemy always used to abuse me but i used to forgive him One day he got up early morning and abused me I forgave him he abused me for long long time and then he was tired and he went to sleep the next day again he abused me shouting swearing words against me I kept quiet I forgave him then third day he started coming to my home and standing in front of the door and started shouting at me he is not tired of doing evil and I went on forgiving 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 and now he increased now everyone who comes in my visitors my guest even them he start abusing them then one day when he was shouting at me in front of my home i went to the kitchen and took one knife and came out the moment he saw me with the knife he ran for life after that never he abused me that day i came to know by forgiving 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 it is not effective once in a while we should react like this with a knife this is the conclusion he came to my dear brothers and sisters this is the same impression many people do have in their mind that is not a christian way of thinking what is christian way of thinking christian way of thinking is this this is salvific the other one now he used their knife and therefore the neighbor never came back but they never reconciled and i told this man you think you are successful but don't you know that you have created an enemy for life you have an enemy living next door forever he will never reconcile and you will never reconcile that is not christian way christian way is this when jesus was dying on the cross he forgave 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 not seven times not seven seventy times forever until his last breath so what happened the whole go- world got converted even the centurion who l- crucified jesus looked at him and said truly he is the son of god he got converted from there thousands and thousands of people got converted suppose if jesus are reacted from mount calvary and kill everybody and take revenge on them let me tell you i would not have become christian i will never accept it such kind of belief praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters christianity is still fresh and meaningful in this world even after 2000 years it is because this this christian way the christian way of reaction is this praise the lord so the word of god galatian chapter 6 9 so let us not grow weary in doing what is right for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up don't give up after seven times forgiveness don't give up if you give up all the seven times of forgiveness is wasted don't give up after seven times 
after 10 times after 20 times after 99 times don't give up if you give up all these 99 times of forgiveness is wasted you think 99 virtues are collected no if you got angry at the time hundred time and reacted all the 99 times of virtues become useless that is why Bible says, let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you lift up your right hand and say, hallelujah. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Somebody who is having terrible back pain and you are not able to bend down and move you're not able to he carry heavy things right now the lord is healing you your pain is gone many people are able to forgive uh, take decision to forgive the lord is blessing you and somebody who has got frozen shoulders because of so many carry you are carrying lots of frustration anger irritation the lord is healing you right now and somebody who has got severe back pain Bend, you know you are not able to bend down you are healed completely as you are listening to this word of God praise the Lord lift up your right hand and say hallelujah thank you Jesus praise you Jesus Abba Father we praise you we worship you we give you glory a hallelujah a hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters there are so many other points too about how to overcome the anger we already dealt with three or four but there are so many we will continue in the coming retreats please do be connected with the divine retreat center and inner healing retreat so the lord will bless you in a mighty way we are going to enter into the adoration right now for anthony is going to come and lead the adoration and after that there is holy eucharistic celebration so please do uh, join with these adoration and healing service you will receive mighty blessings mighty healings and remember we already started dealing with our anger so we will listen more about these in the coming days and the coming retreats and we will continue finding out other points how to get out of or how to overcome the spirit of anger which controls us praise the lord uh, hallelujah so my dear brothers and sisters i have a request for all of you please do do not stop just because of one retreat one day's retreat one session please follow the divine uk live every day you will never be disappointed if anyone has got a doubt ask those who are already following regularly and ask them what was what did they get and if you are sure that they benefited a lot and lots of blessings then please continue listening to every day we have this live streaming every day and once in a while we have every week and we have different language retreats every last week of the month english retreat praise the lord praise so lord. let us all kindly uh, kindly kneel down in front of the lord either kneeling down or sitting down comfortably or standing in whatever position that you feel comfortable to worship do that the lord is going to bless you let us sing together and welcome jesus into our midst our lord jesus is here in the form of eucharist in the blessed sacrament let us give him all glory Let's all kneel down. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. When all becomes sweet, 
Holy Spirit, we welcome you into every wound, every past painful memories, into every habit of ours, into the habit of getting angry, into every sinful behaviors. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. You who delivered the apostles from fear, from anger, from anxiety, from insecurity feeling, Holy Spirit, please come, set me free. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into every area of my life. Bring to mind everything you have heard from Father Joseph, the spirit of anger which is destroying our family, our relationships, everything that we do. We are asking the Lord to come and please intervene. Holy Spirit, you are the only one who knows my past, my present and my future. There is no one who can help me. Come Holy Spirit Into the very moment I was conceived in the womb of my mother until today Every pain that came to me Every sorrow that is afflicting me Where else I go Holy Spirit You are welcome Holy Spirit You are welcome Come this place and the Holy Spirit, I welcome you into every wound, every pain and every sorrow. Lord, please come, set me free. I surrender myself totally to you, Lord. Set me free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shut 
Let's look at the Lord. Holy Spirit is moving inside you. You can pray with me. It's a direct prayer to the Lord. You can pray with me as you are praying together with me. As I am representing you as a priest and praying. Lord Jesus. I thank you for coming into this world. Coming to save me. Thank you my Lord Jesus for shedding blood and delivering me, purchasing me, making me your own. My Jesus, I ask you to set me free from the powers of darkness that might have come to my life from the unwanted practices of Satanism, occult, witchcraft, voodoo, spiritism, horoscopes, new age healing, esotericism, any other things of non-Christian or unchristian practices, idolatry, Lord. Forgive all those who introduced me to this sin and forgive me for involving in this sin. Lord, I know you don't hold revenge of the innocent blood. You are a forgiving God. Lord, I surrender to you all those in my family, family tree, do not know you, accept you. My Jesus, I bring before you everyone in my family, family tree, those who have rejected you. Lord, I declare you are the only Savior. You are the only Deliverer. You are the only one who is the same yesterday today and forever you were you are and you are to come you are the only God who can set me free Lord I beg you to come to the time when I was conceived in my mother's womb I was conceived when my parents were in sin I was conceived in their lust while I was conceived my parents were fighting each other I was conceived against the will of my mother because it was forced sex. I was conceived at a time my parents did not want to have a child. While I was conceived, my parents were in alcohol and drugs and they were not in faith. There was no prayer atmosphere in my home. I was conceived illicitly as they were not married. I was conceived before the marriage of my parents. I was conceived of a rape. While I was conceived, my mother and father had mental weaknesses and physical sicknesses. I was conceived in a fun sex or in a holiday, in the university or hotel or in travels, without protection, love, without surrounded by love. Lord. If unwantedness, irritation, fear, unlove, lust, seeds of immorality, sadness and tendency to bad habits have come to me in the time of conception, heal me by your precious blood. Wash my innermost self and remove all the defects at the time of my conception. It's you, O Lord, who breathed into me and gave me life. By breathing once again on my inner self, make me new. Lift your hands, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Into the moment of my conception, into everything that was transferred to me, as little as I was, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We 
are with you, Lord. We are with you, Lord. We are before you, Lord. Let's look at the Lord. Repeat with me. Take away the negative characteristics from me like anger, selfishness, pride, arrogance, jealousy, unforgiveness, laziness, selfishness that has been passed on to me from my parents' blood. O oh Lord Jesus, heal me from my physical sicknesses like arthritis, rheumatism, blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, skin diseases, allergic problems, insomnia, schizophrenia, sinusitis, defective blood that had come to me through the blood of my parents. Lord, I believe that you are healing me right now. Lift your hands and praise and worship the Lord. His healing power is flowing to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, deliver us, O oh Lord. Deliver us. Where else we go, O Lord? We are wounded. We are broken. We are suffering from sicknesses. We are suffering from anxiety. Set us free, Lord. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Lord, we have come to you. Here begging you for inner healing deliver us O Lord deliver us O Lord Shala Bahala Bandira Bahala Rabariya Shala Bahala Bandira Bahala Rabariya Lord Jesus repeat with me together Lord Jesus in silence I pray that you come with me from the time I was conceived to my birth and heal me from all prenatal defects from the time I was conceived, my mother had a lot of fear and anxieties. She had abdominal pains, bleeding and morning sickness for a long time. She was on bed rest. While I was in her womb, my father suspected her of the conception. He said that the child was not his. I was confused and was in a crisis. They were fighting each other because of me. I could hear the screaming voice of my daddy and I could feel the grief, the sorrow of my mom. Many times my dad was beating my mom. All the while I was shocked and terrified. My dad did not show any affection, concern for my mom. He did not even provide good food for my mom. Therefore, I felt unloved and I was undernourished. Once I knew that they were planning to abort me, I was in panic. Many times my mom was thinking of killing me once I was taken to an abortion clinic. I was weeping with sadness and shivering with fright in her womb. Even though none knew my negative feelings, you, O oh Lord, in your omniscience, have seen it now heal me and set me free from all those traumas and make me healthy lift your hands unto the lord all i need is you lord all i need is you your comfort your presence inside the womb of my mother give me security be my provider my refuge my shelter my fortress all i need is you lord all i need is you thirst for the presence of jesus who is your real dad real mom you are born for him even before you are born in the womb of your mom he knew you he loved you feel his love he's touching many of you many with a severe sinusitis problem with the cholesterol high blood pressure he's healing you Many with a stomach related problem like ulcers and acidity, gastric problem he is healing you. Many with a severe spinal cord problems and back pain he is healing you. Somebody with a severe pain on your neck, behind your back, there is a kind of a bone 
he is healing you from that pain and swollen situation somebody with a severe inflammation on your feet his healing is flowing to you all i need is you lord his love is surrounding you feel it somebody a uterus was removed as if you lost your entire future the lord is consoling you somebody you lost your hearing he is opening a ear janis god is blessing you jimmy god is blessing you shelly god is blessing you shamin god is blessing you Let's look at the Lord. Repeat with me. Heal me, my Lord Jesus. Set me free from all the traumas that came to me when I was in the womb of my mom. The medications and the hardships my mom went through affected me negatively. When I was in the womb of my mom, my dad divorced to my mom my dad died it was a big shock for me i could not express it i repressed all these suppressed all these feeling inside me i had no chance of seeing my dad or getting any love or affection from him i forgive my dad for divorcing my mom and fighting with her With me in her womb my mom ran away from home because of the terror in the city and in the war torn places the drunkenness of my dad the immoral behavior of my dad weakened myself my personality as the reactions came to me through the feelings of my mom the smoking the drug habits of my dad even my mom it caused me weakness lot of fear my jesus come to the time of my birth and heal me from all the defects and injuries that ha- happened to me i'm the first born of my parents my mom had lot of anxiety during my birth i was born premature hence i was kept in incubator for many days i have lot of allergy problems and emotional issues i was born at home or in a hospital i was born in a cesarean my mother was scared of operation she was scared of blood i too am i am scared i have lot of fear lord i don't know from where it came from please lord all i need is you change me when you come inside me i will be delivered from fear come lord Jesus when my mother was going to give birth she had lot of birth pangs i was born in an abnormal position because when my parents were fighting i changed my position in the womb the rough touch of the fingers the cold touch of the scissors 
it all brought fear to me i felt sick i beg you to heal me from all feelings of unlove and rejection always i had negative feeling about my gender i have not accepted my female or male nature i have a self hatred forgive me lord i have regret i have i have regretted my birth and sometimes blamed you lord for creating me like this i had ill feelings towards you my jesus because i was born crippled i forgive you my lord and i accept your holy will right now take away all deformities and crippledness of my mind and set me free i give you glory to you lord at my birth because i did not look like my dad he began to suspect my mom with my birth they started quarreling which ended up in separation often i have lot of guilt about my birth i have heard people making comments that i'm a misfortune i'm a catastrophe the death in the family happened because i was born on a bad omen take away the feelings of regret sadness and guilt received at my birth i hardly remember my dad calling me my name with love he has never hugged me he never cared for me i always found him getting angry with me i lost all joy at an early childhood because of the sadness that surrounded my family with the death of the near ones and the calamity that happened often my parents found fault in me i have deep inferiority complex and feelings of anger my jesus please heal me from all these childhood traumas i was ridiculed and fooled by others i saw myself different to others my mom was too indifferent in giving me love in my young age i was sent to my grandmother to my auntie and i grew up with them i very rarely met my own biological parents they did not love me i thought i was adopted i used to crave for love of my parents but i have never received it i used to weep in the corner of the house seeing my dad my mom keeping my brother or sister in their lap and hugging but i was always neglected i was the most abandoned one jesus but today i can see you looking at me hugging me embracing me with your love all i need is you lord jesus i just need you come lord my jesus i have lot of allergies i am allergic to certain food items drinks i am allergic to certain colors certain clothes certain medicines i am allergic to dust to climate change and to seasons i am allergic to cold bronchitis asthma and rashes on my body ulcers colitis in my stomach o oh lord please give me health where else i go my jesus who else can set me free there is no one who can understand me the way i am 
the way i am wounded the way i was broken the way i am affected come lord jesus the way i am it's only you who love me you who accept me i come to you with all my sicknesses weaknesses pain and inner wounds love me pour out your love to me my jesus look at the lord and feel he loves you he accepts you the way you are with all your wounds feelings of rejection and every pain that you have he is telling you the way you are i love you my jesus i'm a widow i have the pain of my husband's death in my heart but i know you love me the way i'm a widow my jesus i'm a divorcee i know that i did what i should not have done oh jesus forgive me i'm sorry for the sins i have committed as a divorcee but i know you love me the way i am My Jesus I'm sorry that I'm not married in the church I'm not in a sacramental marriage I was angry with the pope with the church with my parish priest forgive me my lord I'm a single mother my Jesus and you know my past but I know you accept me the way I am my Jesus I'm a terrible sinner I have failed you but I know you love me the way I am Jesus I come to you as a wounded broken person I am separated from my husband lord I live alone I have a daughter I have a son but I know you love me the way I am Heal me lord Lord I am a husband I am separated from my wife and my children but i'm sorry lord and i know you love me the way i am i am unmarried i'm single lord i'm still praying and seeking for a life partner there is no one come to me lord but i know you love me the way i am the way you are lord jesus let his love flow to you let his healing come to you Let his love come to you. Jesus loves you so much. The way you Keep are. your hands on your heart the way I am. The way I am. Look at the Lord and you are asking the and pleading. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me so much. The way close your eyes keep your hands on your heart share with the lord who you are today maybe you are divorced you are single maybe you are a widow you are an orphan you are old you are sick you are left alone but remember there is someone who loves you the way you are Keep your hands on your heart feel Jesus is there hugging you He's telling you the way you are I love you claim it He's telling you the way you are Jesus loves you
the whole world the way I am there is someone who loves me with all my weaknesses knowing all my bad habits knowing all my inner wounds there is someone who loves me the way I am let it comfort you let this console you let this message transform you thank you Lord thank you Abba Father thank you Holy Spirit a lady you have no child and your your husband and your in-laws are calling you you are useless he can see your tears he's consoling you but you are a beloved daughter of God is consoling a lady who is childless and the Lord is healing a lady you are burned in a fire tragedy years back and you cannot accept that tragedy happened years back god is consoling you god is delivering many you are attacked by the demons in the night they are physically and sexually attacking you he is setting you free when you are singing that all i need is you the lord was setting you free god is delivering a mom a mom and dad because your married son never visit you never talk to you the lord wants you to forgive them bless them and release them from your heart and they will reconcile back to you god knows your pain he's blessing you the lord is releasing a son from the prison because of the prayers of the mother in tears god is blessing god is blessing by name Jijo, Samuel, Janis, Meshach, Hosea. God is blessing Erika, Winfred, Chris, Jonas, Abigail, Helois, Shobha, Bernadine, Socorina, Oliver, Maurice, Megan, Marcus, Moses, Sona, Greg, Bonnie, Silpa, Siji, Meena, Suresh, Mohan, Doreen, Meenu, Danya, Asif, God knows every sorrow of your heart. He is setting you free. Many with allergy, many with disc problem that you cannot do hard work. He is healing you. God is delivering many from sorrow sorrow of failure sorrow of the death of your family member sorrow of the sin you committed like abortion sorrow of separating from your husband from your wife from your children sorrow of failing a court case the lord is telling put your life in me i can do something new this is 2 corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 he's telling you 2 corinthians 5 17 he can do something new in your life so if anyone is in christ there is a new creation everything old has passed away see everything has become new believe it maybe you have a very painful past memory he's telling the old has passed away everything has become new if you are in Christ Jesus close your eyes stretch your hands like this the way I am with all these past painful memories with all these past sins with all the past terrible mistakes there is someone who loves you the way you are the way I am let everyone hear it your neighbors those who hate you those who avoid you those who reject you those who do not give you any value you declare you proclaim you scream the way I am Jesus loves me this is more than enough for you we claim it
Everybody, the way I am. Thank you, Jesus. The way I am. Jesus loves me so much. The way I am. God is healing a person who has left shoulder pain. It's a frozen shoulder. God is consoling a woman you are married just for three months then you have gone back to your parents home they, you have a failed marriage the Lord is telling I know you I love you I care for you somebody has severe spondylitis God is healing you from this somebody your marriage was failed broken once you are married but you are separated now you are alone you don't know to marry again or to remain single God is going to intervene in your life you will have a proper marital life is consoling you you were cheated by your husband's family then you came back God is restoring your life God is blessing a single person you're living alone Tracy Yama the Lord is telling I know you how much you pray a single lady God is consoling you you're shedding tears the Lord knows you are my beloved daughter. God is consoling an ex-religious nun. You are left due to a misunderstanding from your superiors. You really worked hard. But because of certain rumors, they have taken strict actions against you, which broke your heart and you left the congregation. Even now you are sad. But the Lord is telling, I love you the way you are. I have not rejected you everything good that you have done every hard work you have done it's in my book the Lord is assuring you he loves you the way you are as an ex nun even a priest you were falsely accused as a, a letter was being sent to you with all the false allegations you are innocent you are heartbroken you don't know from where it happened the Lord is telling don't worry it is it will turn out for your good forgive and be silent god is also blessing an ex-religious you are running an orphanage you are going through a crisis but the lord is telling i will rescue you god is god wants many to get out of idolatry and the lord is blessing a hindu lady who is a non-christian lady who is holding on to jesus Though you are opposed by all your family members, God is standing beside you. God is supporting you. God is blessing a carpenter. God is restoring the gold ornaments that you have lost. You are so upset. You cannot even face people because you lost these ornaments. The Lord is telling, just give yourself to the Lord. He will help you to recover it. God is delivering many youngsters. Why are you visiting prostitutes? Don't you know you are destroying yourself? What you need is love. This love cannot be given by anyone but Jesus. Come, don't think that you are already dirty. There is someone who loves you the way you are. Sisters and brothers, let's once again claim it the way you are. And we are going to enter into the Eucharistic celebration. We repeatedly sing this. The way you are, the Lord is telling you. And he is coming to you to bless you. As you are going to receive the blessing of the Blessed Sacrament, continuously declare there is someone who loves you the way you are.
and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let's acknowledge ourselves and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let's plead for God's mercy. Keep your hands open. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy on us. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated. The first reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, 
implore you to lead a life worthy of your vocation. Bear with one another charitably, in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. Do all you can to preserve the unity of the Spirit by the peace that binds you together. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were all called into one and the same hope when you were called. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, who is the Father of all, over all, through all, and within all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial sum, and your response is, Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Your response? Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Your response? Such, Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things. Your response? Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and the reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him. Seek the face of God of Jacob. Your response? Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Kindly stand for the gospel acclamation. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 8, verses from 31. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence, as for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Kindly be seated. We are on an inner healing retreat, and this is the first day. Father Joseph was dealing with the the wound of anger and how to get out of it sisters and brothers i just want to share with you the the depth of inner wounds that can destroy not just our life but those who are related to us i do remember an incident about a teacher she came for a counseling her problem was 
her daughter the first born daughter she is against this mom she will just do the opposite of what mom says and this daughter openly said that she wanted to even kill the mom but she has no problem with her dad that is with her husband and so the mother whenever the mother does something she opposes even she try to destroy her clothes her slippers and she do some kind of harmful things and this teacher is so much respected even by the students in the school even by the society because she is such a noble good woman but she failed completely with her daughter she cannot have any influence on her daughter though she is very influential among even the society even the students in her school so she tried to advise the daughter take her for counseling but nobody could help her because the daughter is also good in the school except to her mother so with all these difficulties when they came for the retreat what the holy spirit is revealed is what in in content that we have read this is john 832 john 832 you will know the truth and the truth will make you free you should know what is the root cause and it is this the inner healing is all about finding the root cause of this behavior why a person is continuously lying it can be due to fear it can be due to the sin of self righteousness it can be uh, due to the spirit of insecurity feeling so if you are not dealing with this this habit will remain there if somebody is doing something we should ask the lord to reveal to us the truth that means the root cause praise the lord so when we ask this mom what happened when this child was in the womb then she said she got married while she was studying she was taking the degree on education so the first thing she told her husband is that we don't want a child until i have completed my studies that is until for minimum 3 years to complete her studies and to start a career the husband was he did not say anything but in 3 months they got pregnant she got pregnant she was so upset so she told the husband now i cannot have this baby because i cannot have complete my studies or have my career it is a block so i think we need to terminate this child but the husband opposed because he was a strong believer he said it's a sin if you have a baby give time to have this baby then you continue but she did not like this idea secretly she thought of doing abortion so she took some advice she tried to take some medicine for abortion she also tried to to disturb the child inside she used hit the womb she thought that the child may go out but the child was born this lady said she did not accept the pregnancy she did not like this baby she thought this child has come to block my career block my future so this is not the time to have a baby but since the child is born she accepted the child cared for the child never expressed anything negative because when when she became a mother she forgot everything that she has done when the child was in the womb now years after when the child is growing up the child is feeling in the subconscious in the unconscious mind that my mother does not love me my mother does not care for me and the shocking surprising thing is that the mother has never told her after she is born that the mother hates her but these were her feelings when she was in the womb sisters and brothers that is why the, the scripture says this is in the book of we read this is psalm chapter 39 from 13 psalm 139 from 13 we read who formed our inward parts 139 psalm 139 from 13 we read for it was you who formed my inward parts you knit me together in my mother's womb is god who has given you birth so a child knows everything when the child is been 
formed in the womb of a mother so every word that the mother was using is what this daughter is using against her now the way the mother tried to destroy her this is the way this daughter is trying to destroy her good fortune good name and she is reacting she even told her i hate you i want to kill you but see this daughter is not talking anything against the dad because the dad never opposed means never wanted to do an abortion now she said now what is the solution we said jesus is the light of the world he came to set you free so we called them together we did not tell the daughter that this is what happened but in the prayer we asked this mother to kneel down before the daughter say sorry to her for everything that she has done knowingly or unknowingly since she is born until today and ask the daughter to forgive her and ask the daughter to pray over the mom later on we told the mom the daughter kneel down before the mom hold her feet say sorry to your mom for hurting her insulting her threatening her it's a sin to hurt the mother it's a sin to offend the mother it will be a block for your life if you don't honor your dad or your mom after all they have carried you in their womb and this daughter after she already attended a retreat she asked forgiveness and we also called the dad she he also asked for forgiveness and the daughter also asked for forgiveness to the dad the dad asked for forgiveness to the to the daughter and the secret hidden chain of satan was broken the family was reunited because they all received a healing sisters and brothers we are all wounded but we have a healer we don't want to be afraid of wounds most of the time what happens we hide our wounds we just say no it's okay there is no problem but there is a problem as long as we have a wound it can come out at any time what we need to do just to bring this wound to the lord that's why we have sung this beautiful hymn called the way i am the way i am jesus loves me so much you, the, the way you are wounded the way you are rejected the way you are being avoided the lord is there waiting for you and accept you that's the way this family was been renewed and recreated today as you attend this in a healing retreat remember there is no wound that cannot be healed by jesus because in bridget of sweden revealed it through her vision that there was more than 5430 wounds in the body of jesus just take even if you take it literally Jesus has power to heal more than 5430 categories of wounds none of you are wounded more than Jesus none of you are rejected more than Jesus remember when Jesus was standing in front of the people whom he healed who gave bread who has delivered the same people screamed crucify him such a huge rejection still jesus prayed father they don't know what they are doing forgive them sisters and brothers this jesus has un- unlimited power to heal you what you have to do come to the lord the way you are you don't want to hide your personality your wounds your rejection maybe you're wounded by your dad your mom your siblings maybe you were on superiors you were on community members but there is someone who loves you the way you are come to him he will heal you and this family this girl this teacher was been completely set free the counselors the psychologists can just physically and externally help us but when it comes to delivering removing these hidden secret wounds because nobody can see even this mother was surprised to hear this because she said i have never told even once when she is born that i don't love her it's when she was in the womb because i thought i cannot have my studies and my child together but what was shocking me is even it affected my child that's why sisters and brothers in healing is so important because some of your behaviors even you don't know why do you behave like this there are many i have seen they get angry then they are very sad 
they say i don't know why i get angry there is some kind of rejection a wound that is attached to that once you remove it you will become a new person sisters and brothers that's why inner healing is important i have seen alcoholics those are addicted to alcohol after they get drunk they immediately say i don't know why do i drink i don't know why i drink always there is some kind of rejection wounds pain that has led them to alcohol once they surrender this to the lord the lord will set them free that's why john 8:36 we read in the history of the world it's only jesus who said if the son sets you free you will be free indeed you will be permanently set free i do remember another incident this is a couple a husband and wife these parents came and they said they have only one son 19 years and this son is threatening to kill the dad so this son his problem is the dad he has no problem with the mom so he wanted to kill the dad so one day he took the knife and put it on his neck and threatened so they got so frightened the son is 19 years he was sent to the university but now he's a drunkard he's taking drugs he's he's moving away with his friends so the parents got so frightened and they tried to advise his son because he's the only son they are so confused they don't know what what is going on with this son because they provided everything for the son they are working so hard but now the son wanted to kill the dad who is providing for him so they tried everything to help him but nothing worked as a way somebody advised to come for the retreat and this family came for the retreat when these parents were sharing we asked because sisters and brothers there is nothing that is hidden that will not be revealed because the lord knows the root cause we read in hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever what happened in your life in 1978 is known to jesus today what does it mean that jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever what happened in 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 the womb of your mom when you are formed is present for jesus your past is present for jesus for no one in this world can say what happened to you when you were in the womb of your mom nobody can say what happened in 1970 when you met with an accident how many were traveling with you what happened to them but for jesus it is by heart because you are yesterday is today for jesus your past is present for jesus believe it that is why jesus has the power to heal you he can go back to that situation and set you free remove this wound and set you free isaiah 43 from 18 and 19 that's why he is telling do not remember the former things so consider the things of old was 19 because i am about to do a new thing there is jesus he can do a new thing and he can do something new in your life and we ask these parents what happened when this boy was in the womb when you were pregnant then the wife this mother said father i now i understand little father i got pregnant before we got married i got pregnant we were good friends but when i got pregnant we were in the university studying together uh he told me he will marry me so father but when i got pregnant my husband rejected me he disowned me he said i cannot accept this pregnancy i am not sure this is my child you leave me go and do abortion he threatened to kill me if i don't do abortion but i got so frightened i could not believe that my husband my boyfriend can change in such a way because i got pregnant we are good friends we are planning to get married i was so afraid i don't know whom to share i don't know if i he, he, do i have to commit suicide i had a lot of confusion but when i prayed i came to know that i should never do abortion so i went and shared with my parents that i am already pregnant 
they were god fearing people they knew the parents of my boyfriend so they went and spoke to the parents of my boyfriend and his parents forced him to marry me because i was already pregnant but he threatened me he told me i will kill you you spoiled my name you spoiled my future who told you to get pregnant you have spoiled my name in the society so i want to kill you with your child this woman said everything my boyfriend my husband told me is what my son is repeating today as he is 19 years when i was pregnant he just wanted to kill me with my child this is what my son is saying today he wanted to kill my dad kill him because sisters and brothers we are talking about in our wounds not to threaten you not to make you be afraid or ashamed this why do god reveal this we need to save our soul to repent this is this is we read in romans chapter 2 from 4 we read romans chapter 2 verse 4 or do you despise the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience do you not realize that god's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance this dad this man did never know that it was a sin to threaten her pregnant wife he did not know it's a sin to advise a wife to do abortion he did never know it is uh, it is a sin to reject his wife that's why we read again this is prophet malachi chapter 2 from 13 we read this is malachi chapter 2 from 13 and this you do as well you cover the lord's altar with tears and weeping and groaning because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor at your hand these parents are telling they are praying for the conversion of the son and the son is not being converted they are praying for the conversion of the son to stop these bad habits but is not being answered they are always thinking this dad these parents are thinking the problem is with the son because he is a drunkard he is an alcoholic he is a drug abuser he is into gambling he is into wrong relationships but the lord is telling you he see you the parents need more repentance when you as parents repent your son will be converted listen carefully we continue to read this is was then 14 we read you ask why does he not because the lord was a witness between you and the wife of your youth to whom you have been faithless though she is your companion and your wife by covenant sisters and brothers this is what the lord is telling verse 14 let's read once again when you listen to me in this inner healing retreat do you think that it's your husband who need healing do you think that your son you need inner healing the lord first wants you you receive this healing first through you they will receive healing you ask why does he not why god is not intervening why my son is not changing why my husband is not changing because the lord was a witness between you and the wife of your youth to whom you were faithless we continue to read to whom you have been faithless though she is your companion and your wife by covenant we then told these parents to repent to pray to the lord attend a retreat after we gave them the prayers this is 1 peter 1:18 and 19 is a prayer to pray for this son we gave him to pray for the son on behalf of this son claiming for this son with memorare three times daily nine times means three times with memorare for nine days you know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without defect or blemish read once again so that you will understand we ask them to claim it for her son i know that my son is ransomed from the futile ways inherited from me from my parents from my ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold 
but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, three times together this scripture, uh, nine days. And we told these parents to bring the son for a retreat. He came for the retreat. And we asked the parents to ask forgiveness to the son. And we asked the son to forgive the parents. They prayed for each other. They surrendered all their pain at the altar of the Lord. And they were being set free. This son was being set free. He realized it is a grave sin to threaten the dad. It's a grave sin to reject them. How did he got this deliverance when the parents accepted, they repented, they confessed and they claimed what Jesus has done for them. Today as you offer this mass, there are many different things in our life, sisters and brothers, but the Lord wants you today. Maybe there is a problem going on in your family. Was while we were praying, we felt that many parents are so much anxious and worried about the future of their children. You are thinking all throughout your children. They are not attending the retreat. You are the only one attending the retreat. You are attending this live stream. Your daughter's marriage has not taken place. Your daughter is, has not yet gotten a child after the marriage. Your son is not yet gotten married. He is already 38 years. There is a lot of confusion among the life of your children and you feel so much worried. Don't worry. If you as a dad, you as a mom, repent, come to the Lord and invite Lord into your inner wounds. The moment you receive healing, the power of the healing you receive will outlive you, will flow to your children. That's what we read in Isaiah 59, 21. Isaiah 59, 21. The retreat that you attend, the word of God that you receive, producing fruit and as for me this is my covenant with them the lord is telling this is my covenant with those who are attending the inner healing retreat from divine retreats and the ramsgate says the lord my spirit that is upon you and my words that i have put in your mouth as a dad as a mom shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouths of your children or out of the mouths of your children's children says the lord from now on and forever let's believe it and claim it let's kindly sing now the offertory hymn and that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Almighty and Eternal God. For through your word, whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, 
and born of the virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection and so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory as without end with one voice we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy o lord the founder of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and wended willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death o lord until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit Remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our pope John Wilson our bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever amen kindly we stand at the serious command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the lamb no, lord i am not, not worthy, worthy that he should enter under, under my roof but only say, say the word, word 
and my, my soul, soul shall be healed may the body and the blood of christ keep us safe for eternal life amen my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen The Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to lift the Blessed Sacrament in front of you as the retreat is going to be ended. Then please continue to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day, even when the retreat is going on and the Lord is going to intervene in your life. There is someone you had severe knee pain on the right leg. You're supposed to go for a kind of a surgery. You are afraid and you are because you are a little old. God is healing you from this problem. Somebody have a pain on the rib cage. You had pain. It is as if they, they, there is a brokenness. God is healing you. Somebody, you are right leg the near the ankle. There is a lot of swelling. You cannot even wear the shoes, you have pain, God is healing you. God is healing a daughter, a little girl who had something fell on the eyes and it is swollen. God is healing this girl. Don't be afraid, she will not lose the eyesight. The Lord is consoling you. Somebody had fallen and you broke your head and there was some blood came out. You are afraid of some internal injuries. The Lord is telling you, no, you have been protected. Somebody who is seriously sick and admitted in the ICU and you are all worried. God is blessing this person you met with an accident. God is also blessing Selena. God is standing beside you, is consoling you. God is also blessing Sophia. Let's uh, kneel down. Let's invoke his presence, his powerful presence. Jesus, I lift up your name. Let's lift his name above everything above our wounds we are all wounded but we have a healer just lift his name he is going to intervene in your life 
great is his faithfulness great is his compassion great is his mercy and he is going to deliver you from everything that is painful jesus we lift up your name i will be lifting the blessed sacrament in front of you just look at the sacrament and let's lift his name on high sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine o sacrament most holy o sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine o sacrament most holy 
O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side. To right and God, true and guide. Amen. There's a person going for an interview. The Lord is blessing you. And may the good Lord bless each and every one of you, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Remember our retreat is until Sunday, every day from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Please inform others and do this evangelization of informing others about this retreat. Also remember we have our daily services, daily from 6 to 9 until this Sunday. So please remember to join this service and introduce this service to others. When the time changes from Sunday, our Holy Mass will be starting in UK at 6.15, but in other countries, our services will be starting at the same time. May God bless you so much.